So every 10 years, we get a new G. And so 2000 was 3G, uh, 2010 was 4G, and then you saw uh, you know, 5G networks come in 2020. Um, and over the course of that 10 years, there's sort of a maturation of the technology. And so, you know, I'd say a few years ago, we, we really reached a threshold with, with 4G where most devices, you know, across the industry had, you know, those broadband speeds, you know, 30, 40, you know, megabits per second. And so 5G is going to take sort of a similar journey, you know, over the course of the, this decade to get there. Now, what is, what is 5G's ob objective? What was it uh, hired to do? And so when I go back and, and look at, you know, kind of GERD's presentation, it is all about the massive IoT, the capacity, uh, things you hear about like tactile internet and, you know, the, the metaverse, uh, as well as robotics, industrial automation. So there's all these big um, themes that 5G is, is trying to solve for. And so fundamentally that requires a different network. So as you go back and look at 4G, you know, there was a huge economic benefit uh, to being able to take an experience from, you know, the, the four walls of a building or a campus and be able to take them anywhere, almost anywhere, because we had a comment about, you know, uh, the truckers. Um, and, and so obviously there's a benefit to mobility in general of being able to have kind of that, that hyper connectivity, that in, any, anywhere sort of experience. And one of my, my favorite examples is going to be like remote control of machinery. So um, if I'm an oil and gas company refinery and I want to, you know, send a robot into a dangerous environment or, you know, a toxic environment, you know, I just want to imagine myself with sort of a console where I could be remote, where I have a video feed off of that robot, but then I also have maybe a joystick where I'm able to control it and complete tasks. And so one component of making that use case successful is the bandwidth. So we do need that video feed. We need it to be high quality so the person can uh, very accurately see what's happening. But then the, the synchronization between uh, the, my, my movements of that joystick, the control, needs to be very well coordinated. And so you can take that use case, you can go into sort of assisted you know, medical procedures, not fully you know, robotic surgery, but you can look into you know, things in the transportation industry. And, and you'll start to notice that it's not just the bandwidth, but it's also the latency, which was mentioned earlier. And so 5G actually brings an entirely new architecture because you know, in 4G, the, the network was, everything was done despite the network. So the network was not really a part of the solutioning. But with 5G, you hear about, okay, it's, it's built in software. So virtualization, we're sort of converting the network from more, maybe a hardware focus to software focus. And so the next phase beyond that is, is all these you know, things like RESTful APIs. And so you, you need very close integration coordination between the, the chipset, the device, the network, the cloud, the application to be able to, you know, go into an enterprise environment, you know, like yours and be able to deliver 5G solutions that coexist with all these other technologies like cloud and AI. So it's a really tall task, um, but that's really what these standards set out to solve for. Now, where are we? I sort of say it's a kind of a nine inning ball game. And so we're probably still in the, the second inning. And one of the first things that the industry is solving for is just that bandwidth, that capacity. And so you hear a lot of conversation around spectrum. So, you know, started with millimeter wave spectrum and then it was, you know, mid band, C band spectrum. The, the industry is saying, hey, we need more spectrum to be able to raise the floor and the ceiling. And, you know, my, my estimation is that we'll probably see the industry move from an average of that 30, 40 megabits per second with 4G to somewhere around 100 megabits per second. And then we'll have the ability to, on a use case or requirements basis, push it into those gigabit per second ranges. So once you have that in place, um, then you'll start to see some of the, the, those next phase, those new solutions, those new applications as some of the partnerships take place. As we do hear a lot of uh, talk about uh, 5G being a wireline replacement, uh, our vision is that it's more uh, and rather than an or. So when you look across, you know, many of your businesses, it's really a conversation of, you know, your site types. You know, is it an enterprise facility like a warehouse? Is it a hospital where you have public and private traffic? Or is it something in the transportation space out of the network? We have to really look at the individual needs of a use case of a business and then uh, assign the right connectivity around it, whether that's Wi-Fi 6, whether that's 5G, whether that's uh, fiber. And so ultimately, you know, working through a partner like a Metel, you'll have the ability to have that consultation to understand your business problems, your business objectives, and then build the, the connectivity around it and ultimately uh, give you the right resiliency, the right performance.
that gives you the, the trade-off between cost and benefit.